everyone. So I'm guessing that you smashed your scales last time. Well done. So what's up next is I'm going to talk about something that is very, very prevalent in society, and that's calorie restriction. You know, we're getting fatter as a society, but we're restricting our calories more than ever. You know, people are going on fad diets everywhere, and they always include calorie restriction. Like, can you name any diets that don't? Well, I can't, except a low-fat raw vegan diet. And I'll get into why that is the case later on. But firstly, I want to talk about why restricting calories is so bad. Then I hear you say, freely, I can't not restrict my calories, I'll get fat. Well, it doesn't exactly work like that if you eat the right food. So when it comes to calories, if we restrict them on a regular basis, then we're teaching our brain and our body to become a fat storer instead of a fat burner. See, that's what we want. We want to become really efficient fat burning machines, basically. I should know, I've been restricting my calories since I was 15. You know, I remember my friend actually came over and she left a piece of paper which had a calorie breakdown of her day and it only had 500 calories, you know, which is a measly, measly amount to run a human being. So you don't want to confuse your body anymore. And the way you do that is you feed it on the right foods. Too many people in society are eating the wrong foods. And they wonder why they need to restrict them because they feel sick eating this way. They also get fat, tired, feel crazy and depressed. So all of these things are a result of eating the wrong foods. So if we're eating the right foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, then we don't need to restrict our calories. But then I hear you say, oh, but nuts and seeds, you know, you need to restrict them. Well, I never restrict them. I eat as much as I desire of nuts and seeds every time I eat them. And the thing is, I don't desire very much of them. I want fruit. So I eat as much fruit as I want with the addition of nuts and seeds whenever I desire them, which isn't that often. And you'll find that when you eat a high carbohydrate diet and you're meeting your basic physiological needs, that your cravings disappear but you need to be eating enough fruit. If you insist on still eating cooked food, then I recommend you eat a high carbohydrate, low fat, vegan diet. Okay, so still heavy on the carbohydrates like rice and grains and like gluten-free pasta, all those sort of things. Okay, they may not be optimal, but they are better than animal pieces and secretions. So make sure you get the carbohydrates in. You know, you're going to fill that hollow organ you call a stomach with as much carbohydrate as you desire. You know, you have a sweet tooth for a reason. It's carbohydrates. You need them. So when that sweet tooth comes up, feed yourself the right foods. So primarily fruit, even if you're on a cooked food diet, okay, cooked vegan diet fruit and then grains and pasta, like potatoes, those sort of things will keep you going and keep your cravings at bay because you're, instead of restricting, like going against your hunger drive, you're honouring it and you're filling, filling your stomach with what it wants. So that just, that switches off those cravings and at the same time it's low fat, so you lose fat. Right, but you have to be patient, it'll take a little bit of time, but you need to be rowing your boat in the right direction because we can try a million different diets you know there's so many different diets out there today and they're all based on calorie restriction and this is why they don't work in the long term you need to eat enough calories and if you're restricting your calories if you're if you're doing these fad diets then you're not going to get the long-term results that you deserve because Mostly they restrict your carbohydrates and the reason they do that is because when you restrict your carbs you lose water weight 
because it takes three grams of water to store one gram of carbohydrate in your body. So with carbohydrates comes a little bit of water, which is natural. You know, I eat a high carb diet. Am I fat? No. <laughs> so it's natural to store a little bit of water with carbohydrate. So when these fad diets cut out the carbs, you lose water weight on the scales. And it's like, yippee, woo, look, I'm losing weight. This is great. This diet is working. But before long, you start to get these intense cravings. Why is that? Because your body needs carbohydrates. Every cell in the human body runs on glucose and carbs is the best fuel. You know, it doesn't have to go through this complicated process called gluconeogenesis to be converted into glucose for the body to use. It's just straight in there. So your body just burns it up. Rarely, rarely does the body store carbohydrates. But fat, oh yeah, that is straight to your fat cells. You may as well just cut a slip in wherever you store your fat and chuck that fat in there. That's what happens when you eat it. So you have to eat the right foods. So when you're eating the right foods, you don't need to restrict your calories at all. One thing that seems to be really popular in this society is fasting. And I have been through plenty of fasting myself. In 2007, I actually fasted for 32 days on water. Not in a row, but across the course of the year. So I was doing like, you know, Monday was a fast day. Or I'd do like a five, five, six day fa water fast here and there. And you know what? The next year I was fatter than ever. Because everything you do, there's going to be a result. It's like Newton's law. For every action, there's got to be an opposite and equal reaction. And that's what happens with restricting your calories. The body catches up. And not only fasting, but also people tend not to eat dinner or they try not to eat breakfast in order to lose weight. I used to do all the time, especially the cutting out breakfast. But what happens is we become ravenous by the time dinner comes around and we're less discerning about what we, we're going to eat. So if you're on a low fat raw vegan lifestyle and you know dinner comes around, you haven't had any of breakfast, you might have had a little lunch, then you're just going to be my guess is you're going to go and eat some cooked food, maybe even some animal pieces and secretions. Like, I, I really, you know, hope not. But when it comes to hunger, if you don't honour that hunger with the right foods and enough of it, then other foods are going to come into the picture, you know, really concentrated courses, sources of calories like, like meat and dairy and eggs. You know, those sort of foods what actually I call eat now, pay later. If you're on a low fat raw vegan lifestyle, you need to really get those calories in. You know, eat more than you think you should because we're so used to these dehydrating cooked food diets which don't contain much water or volume that when we come to a low fat raw vegan lifestyle that contains a lot of volume, we don't realize we've really got to eat a lot more volume to get the same amount of calories. You know, you look at somebody who's eating 3000 calories worth of burgers a day. And then you look at someone like myself who's eating 3000 calories worth of fruit a day. Our bodies are not going to be the same. So I know a lot of people say, oh, calories are all equal. But they aren't exactly, and they're digested differently, they're utilized differently in the body. So it's going to produce a very different result depending on what you're eating. The results of calorie restrictive diets are pretty sad. You know, you become a chubby yo yo, you develop eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia, like I had. You, you generally become a pretty depressed person. So never restrict your calories. Make sure you have a big breakfast. I recommend everybody eats at least 20 or 30 dates for breakfast. 
and I blend that into a data aid, so about 20 or 30 dates with about a, a litre and a half of water, and that makes a beautiful data aid. So if we eat this way, it's not going to make us fat. I know initially some people put on weight, like myself, I did. But what that was, was my body catching up, like all the, the bad things that I had done to my body, basically by restricting the calories for years, I had anorexia and bulimia, for having drugs, having a lot of recreational drugs and some prescription drugs as well, you know, for all sorts of different things. And just all these past abuses, they catch up and the body has to balance out again. And I had taught my, my brain really efficiently to store calories. Because I was telling it, you know, we're in a famine, so store calories, you know, store fat. And so as soon as I got some calories, I started eating enough, my body expanded a little bit. But that's natural. You know, you just need to be patient and need to keep on track. As you can see, I'm not fat. And I eat around 3,000 calories a day. You know, you have a look at all the long-term low-fat raw vegans, they're all slim because fruit doesn't make you fat. Carbohydrates don't make you fat. It's what people put on them. You know, they put on these oily, fatty sources which just go straight to their fat cells. So the take home is, make sure you eat enough carbohydrates, make sure you eat a low fat raw vegan lifestyle or a low fat cooked vegan lifestyle and make sure you got enough carbohydrates in there because you need those carbohydrates to fuel your workout so you can burn the fat. That's how it works. You know, we. We may lose fat sitting around, but it's unlikely. We, we just become a fat, skinny person, you know, which is pretty unappealing to most people. Your metabolism gets low, and your whole state of being sort of gets low. You don't thrive. You're sort of just chugging along at this, you know, low level of existence. You don't want to be like that. You want to be toned, and you want to be fit and healthy, and looking your best, and feeling vital. And that's what you can have if you quit this mentality of restricting your calories. Because that mentality is what keeps you fat. That's what keeps the weight coming back. Okay, so drop that mentality and come into the abundance world. You know, this is an abundant lifestyle. You need to reprogram that brain that says, no, 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 you can't eat that much volume, it's going to make you fat. Because remember, fruit calories and high fat cooked food calories are not the same. They do not create the same body and, you know, I'm, I'm living proof of it. I'm not fat and I eat all the calories I care for. To get those fruit calories in, I recommend at least 2,500 for females and 3,000 at least for males. You know, go way above that if you feel like it. Remember, no calorie restricting. Go for it yourself.